Hi everybody, welcome back to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impact that they're making in the community. Today we are celebrating Kelly Parmalee, who is unapologetically working tirelessly to increase literacy and opportunity for everyone in Lexington, from children all the way up to seniors. Kelly is a very busy woman, and you don't have to go to the library to see her because she's at a location near you. Unapologetically woman, Kelly Parmalee, that's you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to celebrate you today. Let's just jump in and get started. Okay. Tell us what you do at the library. I am the community relations manager. Um, so currently that means I am in charge of the department that handles all of our outreach services, which takes um, story time and library materials and various programs to um, children in child care and to seniors um, that are maybe in residential facilities, maybe seniors that are in Alzheimer's um, or dementia facilities. So we try to take materials and programs to them. So that's the outreach portion. And then I am also in charge of our community partnerships and our system-wide initiatives. Um, like anything that we do with the Community Action Council, um, for example, comes under me and maybe something, a large program that libraries do every summer, a summer reading program. Um, I'm in charge of the summer reading program. And Book Buddies? Book Buddies, yes, that's in our department. So that is a program that matches a volunteer with a homebound senior. And that volunteer goes to the library and picks out things for them and takes it to their home for them. And if you can't get to the library, you have vans. Yes. How does that work? So the book van goes to... Is it like a to, bookmobile? Well, no, it's not a bookmobile. Oh, okay, we, okay. A lot of people remember the bookmobile and ask if we still have it. We don't still have a bookmobile. I used to love the bookmobile. Oh, I know. So many people did. I think they were kind of gone even before I was a child. I don't really remember the bookmobile. Um, but our van goes to daycares and senior facilities and delivers materials to them. We have a route and a certain number of facilities on our list. And so... Um, that's that's where the book van goes and people can request book van service and we'll try to fit them in as our schedule permits okay and then you do a mobile story time what's that about we do we do mobile story time um, in our daycares we have a couple of staff members that go to I think 54 child care facilities here in Lexington and they do story time because we have story time in our branches several times a week that parents bring their preschool child to but if you're in, in chi if you're in daycare and your parent is working you obviously can't come to the library when we do story time so we try to bring story time to you so they'll go to a facility and they may visit four or five classrooms and do traditional library story time it's a lot of fun oh. I heard there's a lot of interesting things that go on at the library, especially at the reference desk. There are. I what actually, happened? I met my husband at the <laughs> reference desk of the library. I assume that's what you're referring yes, to. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so we both have, my husband is the senior manager at Lexington Public Library, um, and I met him when he started working there in 2004, I guess. So you guys have been married for quite a while About now. About eight years. About eight right years. Mm -hmm. I said, there's a lot of things going on at the library, but you never think that you'll meet your, your soulmate there. You don't. One of, our, one of my other coworkers actually was working at the reference desk, and his, um, his well, so a lady came in with her son and asked a reference question, and they ended up getting married. The two of them, when he helped her find the answer to her question, I guess they made some sort of connection, and they ended up married also. So forget about the Internet. Go to the library if you're looking for somebody. Maybe. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. Tell us about First Five Lex. You do a whole lot of work there. First Five Lex is a community consortium that is headed by the Early Childhood Department at Fayette County Public Schools, and they have gathered a variety of community partners um, here in Lexington. I know Community Action Council, UK Healthcare, um, UK Department of Education, YMCA, a lot. Everybody. Of, I know, I can't even think, begin to think of the list. So all those people that do programs and have efforts for children ages birth to five, because 90% of a child's brain develops before the age of five. And so all those partners that are doing things for early, early literacy and early childhood get a chance to get together, compare notes, talk about ideas and things that they can do together. 
share one another's information on social media, all kinds of things like that, just to make a big community effort. My favorite is the Book March Madness. That's my favorite event that First Five Flex does. That is super fun. <laughs> I got to actually, you are what a, a, one of our inaugural winners yes, of Book Madness. Yes, I, I know. I remember seeing you in your costumes. You I do know. it upright. <laughs> I think I put on a pair of rabbit ears the first time I did it, and that was about as far as I went, but you went all out, so kudos to you. <laughs> well, it's always fun to see every everybody in the community getting together, um, you know, for children and, and to express, especially when it comes to um, encouraging literacy activities and things like that. So that's, that's a big deal. Absolutely. But Kelly, you're all over the place. Everywhere I go and everywhere that I don't go, I see you. So you're at Fayette County Public Schools as well. Talk about some of the work that you do there. I am. Um, I chaired Fayette County Public Schools Community Partners Leadership Team for a couple of years. I'm not the chair currently, but I am a member of that team. And as you know, Fayette County Schools does a lot of things. Um, they do a lot of outreach. They have a lot of family initiatives. And we try to be at the events that they have, something like Family University, programs like that. We try to make an appearance at those things. Things. And we try to get um, a library card to every student in Fayette County Public Schools. We have a student success card, which you get upon enrollment um, to Fayette County Schools. So you have all the access to the library's resources. So we try to we try to really work with them a lot. They're our biggest partner. So you're an expert in something else too, okay. needlepoint. You have done some amazing work that I've seen. <laughs> what what made you interested in that? How did you get into needlepoint? You've done your homework. Ah, um, yes. <laughs> your el the elephant is my favorite, I'm going to tell That's you. That's probably one of my favorites, too. Um, I have done needlepoint. So if it ever. just shows up on my desk at work, I won't be mad about okay, it. Okay, I'll ahead. keep that in mind. Um, I've done needlepoint since I was a high junior maybe in high school and back in the day and maybe still you probably saw people with needlepoint belts and things like that mm -hmm. all the time I needed a gift for a graduation gift for one of my very good friends who happened to be a male and I thought well you know what I think he might like that so I learned how to do that and then at that time my dad saw me working on that and he's like well I kind of like that and so I had made four or five of the belts for my dad and I've done some larger projects, but mostly Christmas ornaments. Just so that's fun. what you do in your, in your free time. It is. There's always a project in my purse. There's one in my purse right now. Um, I'm always doing something to stay busy. So. Well, you know, I don't know that you have a problem staying busy because you also <laughs> serve as the chair of the Head Start Policy Council here. I do. Um, I love working with Community Action Council. This, the tremendous impact that your organization has, especially this year during a pandemic and um, the vital services that you all have provided, the fact that your services never stopped. Um, other, other businesses stopped, other businesses closed, but Community Action opened its doors even wider um, when people needed it. And so I love to get to be a part of that organization and the good that you do. Well, well I appreciate that very much, <laughs> but that's not all you do. <laughs> Talk about um, Success by Six. You were involved in that program too. I was involved in Success by Six for the United Way way back in the day. Um, and that was kind of, I think it's kind of what the First Five Lex program is now, gathered a bunch of partners around the table, people um, trying to get children reading, writing, um, early literacy, families, getting families engaged with their child's education before the age of six. I know that that program back when it started several years ago um, brought the Matt Dolly Parton's Imagination Library to Fayette County, um, So as long as we were able to sustain that for several years. Uh, but that was, I think it's kind of what First Five Lex is today. So let me ask you this. Literacy, of course, yes. But what drives you to do the work that you do? What um, keeps you going? I have a passion for volunteerism. I mean, I think, uh, and a desire to stay busy, quite honestly. Um, idle hands, you know, what, that, what they say about idle, idle hands, hands, I yeah. guess. So um, I try to stay busy, and I like to stay busy and engaged, and I think that makes me have the biggest impact. I want to, you know, I want to have an impact on the world around me, and, and I just try to stay, just try to stay busy, and I think that's probably what motivates me the most. And being able to work with organizations that do good, um, when, we're, when we are fortunate enough to not be in a position to need um, some of the services that a lot of our organizations offer, I think we have a responsibility um, to help to help those people provide to the people that do need something. Well, I think it's good to stay busy and to do good, and you do both of, you <laughs> You excel at both of them. You've even won the Intellectual Freedom Award. Tell us about that. I have. Um, I won, several years back, I won the Intellectual Freedom Award from the National Council for Teachers of English for a program that I did in conjunction with 
Actors Guild of Lexington, which is no longer um, in our in our region, but we gathered a group of teenagers for a summer program and we contacted a well-known children's author and asked for permission for these students to turn one of his books into a screenplay. Um, and they produced that play themselves, did all the writing, directing, acting, all that, and put on a performance at our central library one night. It was funded, that program was funded by Toyota. So we were really fortunate to get to do that program several years back. And we had a lot of, a lot of theater kids, which are around town, but we also had a lot of kids that maybe didn't get an opportunity to be in the theater program at school. So um, a lot of kids that may not, you know, have, had been competitive enough to be, you know, a SCAPA kid or whatever oh, mm -hmm. it is, but we had just a lot of kids that were interested in it, but didn't really want to do it full time like some of these other kids do. Okay, so talk to me about Junior League because you're busy. You're busy there, and you've been awarded the Historic Preservation Award with with them. I have. Um, that Junior League is what keeps me most busy um, outside of my work life. Um, I was the president of the Junior League of Lexington in 2018 which was probably the honor of a lifetime. Um, it is an organization of about 600 women. We have about two, 200 to 250 active members at any time, and we're dedicated to volunteerism um, and improving the lives of women and leadership education for women. Um, so we do a lot of service projects. We're required to complete so many volunteer hours each year. Um, and we Which have, is right up your alley. It is. I love it. I've gotten, um, I've gotten to know about so many organizations that I, that I wasn't aware of through Junior League. Um, we put on a horse show every year. This is our 85th year of the horse show. It went on even last year during the pandemic. Wow. It's gone on through World Wars. Um, it's never stopped. And that horse show, a saddlebred horse show, has raised several million dollars. Um, over the years that go directly back into organizations, nonprofit organizations in Lexington. So we have a horse show, and in the fall we have a holiday market, which is down at the Lexington Convention Center for those who like to shop. It's a big holiday shopping extravaganza. I heard you like to shop, so that's up your alley. I love to shop, and that actually, um, one of the volunteer projects that I did with Junior League that was right up my alley was with an organization called Cinderella's Closet. And you got to help girls who may not be able to afford it otherwise pick out a prom dress. And so volunteering while shopping, I mean, that combined my absolute two favorite things. <laughs> and just getting to play fairy godmother for mm -hmm. a girl as she tried on all kinds of prom dresses and getting to accessorize her with shoes and jewelry and all that was just so much fun. That's a um, that's a volunteer opportunity that I'll never forget. It was such a good time. That sounds so exciting. It was. But you know what? You one of the things that I notice about you is you always make sure to make time for yourself. And I've seen that you guys have had a very special pooch at your um, game nights that um, has to help your husband try to beat you. We do. We have um, we have two dogs of our mm -hmm. own, Cooper and Gizmo, Humane Society adoptees that I absolutely love and adore. And I have some cousins that live here in town, and they are dog lovers as well. They have five dogs, and we have family game night at their house quite often. <laughs> um, Clue is a favorite game and uh -oh. Trivial Pursuit. And they're, they have a little chihuahua, and she loves to get in my husband's lap and play with him and look at his cards and things like that. And I thought to, she was trying to help him. I said, I cannot believe he's trying to use the pooch to cheat. He might need some help sometimes. <laughs> he is, you know, he's, he's a good guy. He always wins a trivial pursuit, so I think maybe the dog is trying to clue the rest of us in on what he's, <laughs> what he's thinking because he always gets the answer right. It's kind of disgusting. I know. <laughs> I, I don't like when somebody's always the winner. I just can't take it. Yeah, I can't either. So, I, Kelly, I want to thank you for being with us today, but I want to leave the last word to you. Any words of encouragement or anything to women and girls who might be watching? Um, I Just, you know, do what you love. Um, volunteer. Um, be active in your community. You get into something. What you, you get out of something, what you put into it. And I think that one of my favorite quotes is what I'll leave you with. It's actually from Thomas Jefferson, and it said, in matters of style, swim with the current, and in matters of principle, stand like a rock. And those, that, that's probably the advice that I would give to everybody. It's good advice from the shop. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you guys heard it from Kelly Parmalee, stand like a rock. And continue to watch us as we celebrate phenomenal women all across Kentucky who are rocking it out and making a difference. We'll see you soon.